Welcome to West Coast Ranching. I've had a lot of people asking me about some of the differences between using a micro squirt and a stock GM ECU and maybe why you should use a micro and in this video I'm going to go through some of the reasons why you should use it and some of the reasons why not. So for starters the price is really attractive. Uh, a micro squirt is pretty cheap it's around 400 bucks and HP tuners and software for a GM ECU is about 500 bucks. Next the micro squirt is very simple so it operates using a batch fire and wasted spark system. Batch fire means it fires four injectors at once, two on each rail. Wasted spark means it fires two coils at once, one of those coils being on the exhaust stroke. The reason for these simplifications is that a lot of electronic like PCB board engineering is related to heat. Uh, so if you have those other injector drivers and the other coil drivers, the PCB board gets way hotter, which means that it has to be way bigger to get rid of heat in time. So it's just ultimately you can make a lot smaller, a lot cheaper unit if you have less coil drivers, less injector drivers. That's why the MicroSquirt does this. And that's part of what keeps the cost and size down. For whatever reason, people seem to be really scared of the batch fire aspect of this, meaning that you fire two injectors on one rail and two injectors on the other rail. Wide open throttle performance won't change and fuel efficiency will slightly change. The exact amount that fuel efficiency will change, I couldn't tell you, but it's not very much. This isn't something that's going to change your fuel mileage by 10 miles per gallon or something. This is something that will change your fuel mileage by maybe one or two miles per gallon. The thing is a lot of people, they don't like the batch fire aspect because they think about, well, the injector spraying fuel when the valve is closed, where's all that fuel going? Well, the fuel sits on the back of the valve and it cools it down and sequential injectors do this as well. Actually, they, if you look at the injector timing, it's not timed exactly when the valve is open and spray a little bit before and such, but the reason that this isn't such a big problem is because the intake port velocity is so high, the air is flying through there so fast that it'll pick up this extra fuel and bring it back into the engine. So it's not like the fuel gets wasted or something. It still goes into the engine. It's just not as efficiently atomized as with the sequential system. So the wasted spark aspect, people don't seem to hate this one that much, but it just fires a coil on the exhaust stroke and it doesn't affect your horsepower or anything like that. So ultimately, these two simplifications, though they are simplifications, in my mind, for my application, I don't care. I would have just put a big, ugly carburetor on my car anyways. So I might as well have it fuel injected. Doesn't ever bog. Gets really good fuel mileage. And it runs totally perfect. So for the sequential versus batch fire argument, pick a side. Some people might want that extra tunability. But in my opinion, most people won't even know how to use it. Lots of people aren't going to understand how to set up an injector timing table. Next, the again, we we'll use our 5 volt reference tune. as well as the sensor so, ground. This thing is built and so then that you the can output wire from the map anything. goes to the map and wire. The software you see, all these sensors free. are essentially wired the same way, so bucks, it's pretty easy to get it right. And it has a ton more features you can look into. But the GM computer is not designed to be tuned. So you have to buy expensive software like HP tuners. You have to get rid of all the emissions function. It's it's not necessarily a bad thing using HP tuners and the GM ECU. For me, this was just a more straightforward route. It's more simple. All the instructions were out there on how to use it, how to wire it. You see there's a lot of blurry information online about how to use a GM ECU. Because I know a few friends who've done the GM ECU. Works perfectly fine. It's not, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a great thing. It's just the information out there doesn't seem to be as clear. Next, the microscore is adaptable. So it's got a certain number of inputs and outputs on it, and these are really easy to tune. There are certain inputs that you can select uh, and set up with some sort of sensor, and you can trigger certain outputs. One example would be to use the RPM microsquirt and trigger a pin to output when you want to turn your shift light on or something like that. So the microsquirt also has CAN bus ports. This part gets a little confusing to people, but I'm a nerd and I'm going to go into it regardless of if you want to hear it or not. <laughs> so there's essentially two wires that come out uh, and they send out a bunch of ones and zeros. Uh, so how this protocol works or how any protocol works is that for digital devices like a microsquirt, they communicate with ones and zeros. And the protocol is essentially when you communicate with ones and zeros in a very, very specific way. So the very specific way that the microsquirt communicates is with CAN bus. And you'll see tons of things out there communicate with CAN bus. 
So what I'm currently working on is just a really cheap $5 microcontroller and it's going to plug into my Arduino Uno. I bought it on eBay and I'm going to use it to read the CAN bus outputs coming out of my microscope. So what does that all mean? Well this means that with my super cheap microcontroller and my Arduino which is about 30 or 40 bucks, this means that I can now extend the amount of outputs that my microscope has. So I can take all of the information that the micro has, communicate it over CAN bus, the things that I want, and trigger certain outputs based on those. So if I ever run out of outputs, I can automatically get as many other outputs I want by having as many Arduinos hooked up to this as I want. It's a really nerdy, weird thing to do, but ultimately for me, this came down to the price. With a microscope, you can fuel inject your car in a weekend for $400. So why wouldn't you want to use a microscope? Well, I can give you the number one reason not to use it, and that's if you have an automatic transmission, because the microscope can't control your automatic transmission. So if you have 4L60 or 4L80E, the GM computer is a really good solution in this case. You actually can buy a standalone transmission controller. They range in price, but you know, you're, you're going to be looking at close to $1,000 by the time you're done with it. So in that case, the GM computer is really the best option. Another reason why you might not want a microscope is because of the slight efficiency differences I spoke about earlier because of the batch fire system. Furthermore, you might not want a microscope if you don't want to go through the process of soldering together a harness, learning how to tune. Ultimately, the micro is cheap, it's simple, it's small, and when you're done with it, you will know EFI inside and out. I really was attracted to it because of all the information out there about it, the simplicity of setting it up, as well as the idea that by the time I am done with this micro squirt, I'll know how to tune EFI, I'll be able to fuel inject anything, and ultimately, I learned a ton about EFI from it. I learned how to tune my own car, and I've helped out some other friends with micro squirt setups as well. It's a super great feeling to be kind of understanding in the modern world of how these EFI systems work, as opposed to using a GM computer and just essentially going by you know 500 different threads on the internet about which wires to connect and I just didn't want to do that. So that's why I chose the microscope. You might have different reasons. And if you have any questions about going with one, let me know. I'll try to help you out. Thanks for watching.